I have paid so much money to learn about YouTube, content marketing, how to get clients and still have a hard time sticking to all those templates and following all those rules. Maybe it's because the extroverted thinking function that's responsible for categorizing and organizing is deep in my shadow, or maybe it's because I'm just one person trying to run a business. So in this video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes into my process of what I'm planning for this channel and for my business next year and ask for your help to keep me accountable. I may not know that much about YouTube and marketing, but what I do know is that I love reading and learning about psychology and relationships and then applying that knowledge during my coaching and training sessions. Unfortunately, I have had a hard time documenting my reading and learning and sharing that stuff online as I go along. So people who might be interested in coaching and training have had a hard time finding me. I thought templates and rules would help. So I would plan out a bunch of stuff and then feel overwhelmed and not do it because for me, the planning is the fun, not the actual doing then. So far, these templates have not kept me engaged. And while we're at it, I really don't want to rely on AI to write for me either. I know that many creators use it and it saves time and I'm sure it can be useful in many ways, but I'm old school. So here's what I decided. I'm just going to do it in a way that works for me. That will allow me to practice some introverted feeling, AKA valuing, giving myself permission to show up as myself and let you decide if my way of explaining things and publishing things resonates with some of you. My way includes not spending a lot of time on editing and adding B-roll to my videos going forward, because that stuff takes a lot of time or a lot of money. But in exchange for me spending less time fidgeting with the video frames, I will write more detailed descriptions or show notes. And I might also start offering handouts as downloads for those who want to follow along the teaching videos and learn more hands on with questions and journaling prompts. How's that? But yeah, so first on that list of doing it my way is being transparent about the struggles I have with creating online content, which apparently is all about storytelling and hooks and algorithms and things. Well, I prefer to give you helpful tools in a straightforward way, probably because I have introverted intuiting as my second function and introverted intuiting in that position is all about bottom line support. Here's how that's going to work out. Here's what those symbols mean. Let me know how that lands for you, not once upon a time when the birds and the bees or whatever. Not saying I'm not going to try storytelling going forward. I'm just saying that's yet another skill I'd have to learn. And I think I would use it as an excuse to procrastinate on sharing stuff. And it's about the sharing stuff. So this video isn't the teaching piece yet, because for now, I just want to lay out all the stuff that I want to talk about, namely type, psychology, neuroscience, and how all that applies to relationships. But I guess in that way, it's intended to help you make a decision whether that is the kind of content you're interested in and whether you want to keep following me here. On that note, I'd love to hear in the comments which of the topics you're most interested in so I can get on those first. And by the way, if you're new here, excuse the ramble. Hi, my name is Doris. I'm a certified coach with a master's in psychology. And through this channel and my coaching practice, I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. If you're wondering what a smart romantic is, I have a video for that already, but don't click away just yet. I'll also put that in the description and then you can find it again later because I want to continue with the transparency thing for a bit longer. Okay. So I have ENFJ preferences and I'm in my late forties. Psychological type is a big interest of mine, especially how those cognitive functions change my personality and my perspectives in midlife. ENFJs lead with extroverted feeling, aka connecting and harmonizing. We support with introverted intuiting, aka foreseeing and knowing. We find relief, but also struggle with extroverted sensing, aka experiencing and being in the present moment. And we aspire to getting better at introverted thinking, which is analyzing and problem solving. In other words, and let me know if you resonate, the first 30 or so years of my life have been all about people pleasing and keeping the peace. But now that I've had a few years of therapy and frankly, life experience of living and working in five different countries and being married to a Spanish INTP for nearly 17 years, that introverted thinking voice that used to be just super critical is now a lot more active in teaching me new stuff and helping me understand how 
things fit together. I love my introverted thinking now. It makes my neurons tingle, you know? Why should you care? Well, I'm really good at learning new stuff and summarizing it down into the bottom line practical applications. So in these videos, and I guess in my newsletters, because let's face it, who has time to write different materials for all these different channels? My plan is to share and teach you the things that I learn. And if that content is too generic for you, you can hire me for one-on-one -on -one coaching and then we'll talk it through what the insights mean for you specifically because coaching goes beyond teaching, right? Into practicing new behavior so you can actually change your life. And now after that preamble, again, the topics that I want to talk about, which is why I made this video to hold myself accountable for 2024 and not go off on too many other tangents. That new stuff tingle is just so seductive, you know? But like I said, I want to prioritize sharing information about psychological type, psychology, neuroscience, and how all those insights apply to romantic relationships. The type stuff will be general information about what the cognitive functions are and how they show up. For example, the analytic and holistic flavors that Dr. Dario Nardi just talked about in his latest books, The Magic Diamond and Decode Your Personality. Speaking of books, I'm also thinking about reviewing type books in a little more depth. For example, Depth Typology by Mark Hunsika or Navigating Midlife by Elena Corlett and Nancy Milner, or the Interaction Styles Model by Dr. Linda Behrens. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know. The psychology stuff will be based on what I've learned in my master's about, for example, how we form attitudes, what motivates our behavior, what the scientists say personality is, evidence-based accounts of theories like attraction and love, but also the debates that are still going on in psychology today like do we even have free will or is all we do predetermined that is already quite complex in and of itself because we're following the biopsychosocial model what's the biological or genetic impact on behavior what's the psychological or cognitive impact which is where i think type comes in and what's the social or cultural factors that influence what we think we want, for example, when it comes to relationships. People underestimate the impact of culture. And I'm also a cross-cultural trainer and actually started my coaching practice and business helping expats be effective abroad faster. So again, there's a lot of knowledge in my head that I want to find ways to channel and share with you. For the neuroscience stuff, I have recently become slightly obsessed with Dr. Lisa Feldman Barrett and her approach to brain anatomy. Her books on how emotions are made and the new rules about the brain, which suggests that frankly, half of what I learned in my master's last year is apparently outdated already. But yes, generally speaking, our brains create our realities. It's not that they react to outside triggers, they learn all the time and then to save energy, predict what they think is the most likely outcome based on past experience. And that creates your moods and that creates your emotions and most of your attitudes and behaviors as well. Fascinating, right? So my brain, that's what's making my brain tingle. Because also, tangent, I have another book that I might review in this context. Antonio Damasio's book, Feeling and Knowing, about what consciousness even is and where it comes from. And also Kathleen Wallace's book, The Network Self, because the brain is a network and our sense of self is a social construct, so we also exist in a network. If you also have an N in your type code, you're probably nodding along right now and maybe even getting excited and maybe even have read the books already yourself. But if you have an S and you're still watching, great, thank you. If you have a sensing preference, um, again, this is I'm trying to lay out what it is that you can expect from me going forward. These are all the things I want to write and talk about. And I need you to keep me accountable. Anyway, tying those type psychology and neuroscience insights together for romantic relationships then makes this big old matrix of all sorts of combinations and things because relationships themselves obviously have so many different lenses as well. I'm planning on applying the type psych and neuro insights into dating, mating and relating. Dating being the first phase of getting to know one another and attraction, mating being the sexual intimacy piece, which is so, so important. 
and relating will be about communication, conflict management, trust and how your needs might change and evolve over time as you go through the different stages of relationships like the honeymoon, the power struggle and the appreciation phases. I don't quite know yet how to bring non-monogamous relationship insights into these topics, whether it's going to be a separate thing or weaved in, but actually I think I'm going to weave it in because my research and other data also suggests that non-monogamous or open relating relationships are not only viable alternatives, but the smarter choice for some people. And it's definitely not talked about enough yet because of the stigma. While we're there, in case it wasn't clear, this channel is going to be a stigma-free zone. All types are welcome, all relationship structures, all sexual preferences, all gender expressions, everyone is welcome. And there you have a broad overview of what I'm planning to share in 2024. I want to be more organized about it. I want to still provide value and be helpful. And I'm probably not going to be hiring anyone, so doing all of this by myself will take some time. I'm still deciding between offering short bite-sized pieces or long form, complex, proper kind of articles. And that's also going to depend on how much time I have to prepare each one. You can already tell I want to add as much information as I can and the complexity of my topics will mean that some videos might be longer. But I'll do my best to give you knowledge so you can use to create happier, healthier relationships in your life. So I hope you'll stick around. And if you still have a moment, why not check out that Smart Romantics video now? And I'll see you there.